How do you do? The great cleric John Newton said, I believe my father loved me, but took great pains not to show it. I was always in fear of him. Today we'll hear the story of a man who grew up in such a way. Discouragement and exasperation faced him at every turn, to the point that he gave up trying to do right. That is, until witnessing others' hope in faith, which made him thirsty for the love of the ultimate father. And that's when his heart and mind and very life were unshackled. You need help with your homework? No, ma'am. I thought you had spelling words. I'm working on them. You better do better than last week. I got a 95. Would have been a hundred, except for missing an S in Mississippi. If you were smarter, it would have been one hundred. Mom, I... I mean it, Daniel. You're stupid, just like your brother. I'm studying hard, Mom. Do you know how to spell dumb? D-U-M. <laughs> Daniel's D-U-M. Dumb. I'm going for a walk. I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of this. I I can't take it. <laughs> This is Unshackled, the longest continuously running audio drama in history, sharing inspiring stories of real people recorded in Chicago at Pacific Garden Mission. For nearly 150 years, the old lighthouse has cared for hundreds of thousands of people who struggle with homelessness. Every day, hundreds of men, women, and children receive hot meals, refreshing showers, and a safe place to spend the night. Each guest is spoken to one-on-one -on -one by our staff, and many are introduced to someone who loves them far more than they could ever imagine, which is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3,848 in the series, Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. The man in our story didn't know that the slippery slope he began to embark on would end in a landslide. Would he recover? We'll find out in this true story of Daniel Martin, right now on Unshackled. That interaction with my mom represents every day of my childhood to some extent. My Panamanian mother married my Panama-stationed United States military man father in 1983. Mom soon grew bitter when they moved from her own country to the States. Adding fuel to the fire, she resented Dad for whatever relational and financial issues came upon the family. There were times I grew so desperately furious with her aggression, I took to pounding small craters into the ground with my fists, wondering why I was alive, and even once punching a board out of the backyard fence. My brother and I felt hatred for her, so we found our own ways to cope. I can't wait to get out of this place! You and me both. Had another run-in with Mom. I know. Hard not to hear all that screaming and name-calling. I should just run away again. Well, that's not really sustainable, brother. What do you mean? There's only so many meals you can miss. Can only stay so long at friends' houses. And there's also the police who nab you and bring you back to this prison called Home Sweet Home. I know, but anything's better than this. You know, there's more than one way to escape. Jeff, you better put that away. If Mom sees you, she'll wring your neck. It's late. She's not coming out here. Besides, this koozie pretty much covers the can. I can't believe you. Don't be so judgmental. Here, have a drink. I was 16 when I had my first beer. I couldn't believe how liberated I felt. Emotions that were foreign within my mother's heckling household. So booze equaled escape. From then on, I was constantly sneaking alcohol any way I could. From stealing hard liquor and refilling the bottles of water to swiping beer cans out of the fridge, it made no difference to me. Or, I should say, not at that time. Wasn't that such a good movie, Sam? <laughs> it was, but I can't believe you've seen it three times already. Yeah, it's something to fill my time. You want to ride home? Nah, I'll walk. You sure? Yeah, 
I like to walk through Henderson Park and sit on the benches like an old man. It's a bit chilly for that. Yeah, it'll be fine. You all right? You got something to think through? <laughs> Always. I mean it. Dan, are you okay? I don't know. Tell me, man. My brother's hanging out with some shady people. He's failing classes. The rare time I do spend at home, he's absent. I guess I just miss him. Yeah, I can see that. Then there's my folks. Yeah? They're constantly fighting. About anything and everything. And all the wrongs ever committed. It's exhausting. That's tough. And I just don't understand why I'm here. What purpose is all this? Dude, I wish I had an answer. You know, I've been studying different religions and beliefs. And trying to see what makes the most sense. Well, when you find something that does, let me know. <laughs> oh, I will. Avoiding home as much as avoiding my mother helped me feel a sense of peace that I didn't have otherwise. There were times I'd stay at friends' houses and continue going to school, but not go home. Other times I'd stay out late trying to find anything to do to fill my time so I could creep in after my parents went to bed. Sometimes I'd just leave and wander around drinking for a few hours at a time until I settled down enough to come home. I knew it wasn't any way to live, but I was desperate to find answers and a course for my aimless life. Must have really overdone it last night. Ah! Oh, the room's spinning. Daniel! It's about time you got your lazy self out of bed. Get down here and clean the garage. I'm just so tired of this. All the nonsense. What am I doing? What am I doing, God? Hey, if you're real, God, do please show me you are. Because I can't take this anymore. I just can't! <sighs> wow. Wasn't expecting that. That was the moment. The strangest thing happened. Right in the middle of despair that I'd languished in so many times, I felt something different. A presence came over me like a breeze. It was barely noticeable, but it was unlike anything in my life I'd experienced. I cried out to God and I felt a sense of peace, but it was short-lived. As life spiraled more out of control my senior year, I pretty much forgot what happened. Daniel Martin, please come to the principal's office. Daniel Martin to the principal's office. <laughs> What did you do? You're in trouble. It's probably my mom. I forgot my lunch. You don't get called to the principal's office for a ham sandwich. How could you? Such a stupid, idiotic boy. I am so disappointed in you. Mom, Dad, I didn't do anything. If you always oh, something, what are you going to do about okay. it? You have to okay, do something. Okay, everybody, let's take a breath. Daniel, you do have a lot of explaining to do. You have an answer for this? How should I know what's in there? Well, the student it was confiscated from said he bought it from you. Okay, so it's Tylenol, so what? Daniel, I've been doing this for too long to oh, believe man, that... My son is a liar, too. What is it? You know, we can easily have it tested. Okay, fine. Look, I had narcotics left after I got my wisdom teeth out. I You're selling drugs? I can't believe you. Thank you for explaining. Oh, son. You do understand, Daniel, that you were in possession and selling a controlled substance. So, you will be expelled. My senior year? You can't do that! Yes. Hey, uh, sorry to, uh... No, 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 come on in, Officer DuPont. Is this Daniel Martin? It is. Daniel Martin, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. I, I can't believe it. Wait, 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 stop, wait, wait. This isn't that big of a deal. I got prom next week. I can still go, right? I would soon find out missing prom was the least of my worries. My parents lost whatever trust they had in me. I spent the night in jail for they bailed me out. And then life took another turn. Why are we stopping here? Is that a hospital? Actually, 
It's a rehabilitation center. You need to visit someone? Daniel, I don't like this any more than you do. No! I won't go! You don't have a choice. So you're gonna take me in there against my free will? I'm not going to, but there's staff that will come out to escort you in if needed. No! No! I'm not doing it! This is America and I have rights! You're an alcoholic and apparently now a drug peddler. And you need more help than your mother and I can give you. I'll be good. I'll be good, I promise. I'll, I'll do whatever you want. It's too late for that. You're going in. Now, please! I can't believe this! And so I ended up in rehab for alcoholism before getting out of high school. My future job resume was turning more and more into a rap sheet. I was hoping beyond hope that drug dealer wasn't going to be added next. Desperate as I was, I even turned to prayer. Again, asking God to show himself and I'd follow him if it was his will. Answers came the following morning while I was sitting in the lobby and one of the counselors walked in. Daniel, God has chosen to come to you early in your life. Do not be afraid. I understand it's his will, not mine. <laughs> That's right. At the time, I couldn't comprehend why this random person would come up and say such a thing. Yet I also understood I had been seeking God, and he must have been listening. He must have been answering. That's when I really started keeping a lookout for God and praying he'd intercede, especially with my upcoming court date. I hoped he could make a difference. We'll continue with Daniel's story in just a moment. But first, I have with me the president of Pacific Garden Mission, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thank you, Tim. You know, these stories never fail to lift my spirits and remind me of God's power to transform. I know exactly what you mean. Many of our listeners share how inspired they are by these true testimonies. Unshackle has a huge impact. But you guys have come out with a new program, right? For those times when life gets busy and it's hard to find the time to relax with a full 30-minute episode. We have. These are our daily devotionals. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Certainly. Like Unshackled, daily devotionals are based on real-life stories that help us think about how Scripture applies to our daily lives. So far, we've shared such stories as a strip club owner who transformed her building into a homeless shelter and a police officer who restored his relationship with the wife and children he'd neglected. Christ's love works in miraculous ways. So how is this program different than Unshackled? Daily devotionals come in bite-sized, four-minute episodes. That's fantastic. People lead such busy lives these days. Yeah, that's why it's so important to cherish every moment we have with the Lord. And daily devotionals make that possible for us to center our mind on Him, even in the middle of our busy schedule. And where can people listen to this new show? Well, if you want to hear it on your local radio station, reach out and let your station manager know. Or give us a call at 312-492-9410 and ask for Unshackled. We'll look forward to hearing from you. Court's about to begin. Are you ready? <sighs> I'm so nervous. It's to be expected. You think the judge will go easy on me? It's your first offense, so possibly. Otherwise? I've seen him set examples so people understand the severity of their actions. I understand. I was sentenced to 100 hours of community service and sent to a school for juvenile delinquents and criminals. I had to wear a uniform, walk with my hands behind my back, and go through metal detectors every day. It was not how I imagined my senior year. For community service, I started doing janitorial work at a church. While there, a run-in with the pastor would change my perspective. Oh, sorry. I was just going to empty the wastebasket. No, no, it's fine. Okay. Daniel, how have things been going? Honestly, I'm getting tired of judgments. I hope not here. Not here. Feels like it's from everyone, though. From peers to adults alike. They treat me like some hardcore criminal. Hmm. And how would you like them to view you? As a kid who made a stupid mistake? We can't control how others view us. And perhaps it's not a bad thing. What do you mean? Well, circumstances are often opportunities to teach us to understand Jesus. So, people treating me like a terrible person is an opportunity? If you make it one. 
How would I do that? In the Bible, Jesus rose above accusations and misconceptions and allowed people to choose what they wanted to believe. How could he do that? Because Jesus was confident in who he is and his mission, as the Son of God. So you're saying he did his own thing, regardless of what others said and thought? Exactly. And that's what I'm to do? Not exactly. In the book of Colossians, it says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. So, not your own thing according to you, but your own thing according to the Lord. So these hundred hours of community service... You can do your best work for the Lord. It's a good way of seeing it. Maybe I won't feel so bitter about all these hours and how people view me if I'm committing my work to God. God can use all our circumstances, Daniel. The pastor's advice was incredible. As my understanding in God grew and he chipped away at my pride, my fear of my predicament and being around other criminals dissipated. I still retained who I was, yet didn't allow the environment around me to change me. I also was fascinated with our small group rehab, particularly by a woman named Kat. I'm telling you, life is hard. My kids are all embarrassed I'm here. My husband doesn't understand how I can spend so much time and money on treatments when all I need to do is stay away from the bottle. Hmm. Yeah, that's tough. I understand him. I do. He's taking care of the house and the kids largely by himself and working. And I need to be back at work too, but here I am instead spending my days trying to quit thinking about drinking. No. We're glad you're here. You gotta take care of yourself first so you can take better care of your family. Yeah. I just feel bad our finances are going to pot because of me. I feel like I should be able to help it more, but I can't seem to. <laughs> but I just... I gotta take one day at a time. <sighs> but I trust my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Day after day, Kat would pour out her troubles, and she always ended in, but I trust my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, every single time. The hardship I had gone through early on seemed like it made me more distant to God, but this woman kept saying she trusted in Him. It flipped a switch in my brain, and I started to see a different perspective on suffering. On the last day of rehab, I approached Kat. Kat, <laughs> I always see you come in here and you talk about your problems, but despite that, you're always positive and hopeful, and it makes me happy. Oh, that's kind of you. Yeah, um, so hang on to your faith, because your faith, your, your Jesus, will save you. As I said those words to Kat, I realized just how true they rang. That moment, I was willing to put my faith in what she believed in, even though I hadn't fully believed it myself. It felt as though the words I said to her were actually meant for me. I needed to do something about it. Yellow! Sam? Hey! What's up with you, man? I'm good. About wrapped up my community service. Great! Now you have more free time. Yeah. So you can be hanging out with us again. Hmm? Uh, well... <laughs> Yeah, I, d I don't know about that. Oh, uh, what do you mean? Listen, I, I, um, I, I guess I'm not really into partying now. Okay, what have you done with Dan? <laughs> Seriously, Sam, I, I'm finding out there's more to life, and, and that's what I'm interested in now. Are you getting all religious? Is this from cleaning that church? Man, don't let them get in your head. No, 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 it's not like that, Sam, no. It's just, I know there's a God now, and this thing called faith, and they're better... Higher ways to live. Uh, it's too late. They got to you, bro. You know, all my life, I've struggled with why I'm here and what my purpose is, and how it all fits, and... And now I know. We are made for a relationship with God. I can't believe you! You're ditching your friends for church? I was going to church and reading my Bible hours a day. I didn't have an interest in hanging out with my friends who were continually getting arrested. I was able to forgive my family and myself, and asked to be forgiven. 
Some days I could sense God's presence in my life, and other days it was hard to. Feelings of fear and deep depression. I didn't understand. It all built up one evening while reading scripture in the book of John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God, I don't want to perish. I want to have everlasting life with you. I mean, I can't even see my life five years from now. I can't see past my sadness sometimes. How am I going to see everlasting? <laughs> I know I'm going to die. I don't want to die in condemnation. I want to be saved. I want a life with you, Lord. Jesus, save me. Lord, please save me. Please. Please. When I asked the Lord to save me, I felt a presence inside me like a heartbeat. I felt it once like a pulse. And as I pleaded with him, I could feel it again and again, growing stronger like a radiance. When I woke up the next morning, my mind had been transformed. My fears and racing thoughts were gone. I stared at my hands, wondering how it was even possible that I could feel such love and peace. But it would soon be tested by fire. Where have you been? Playing basketball at the park, remember? And that took so much of your morning? There were little kids. I was teaching them how to shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always some excuse. What's wrong, Mom? You know why you leave? Because you're lazy. You're just a bum. And don't want to do any work around here. Mom. What kind of future do you have? You, already with a record. Oy, so impressive for colleges to see. You know what? It was one mistake. But here you are, with Mom. A... I'm sorry for whatever I did to make you upset, okay? I love you, and I don't think this is what Jesus wants. Oh. God, please take this anger from me. Help me love my mom and be more like you. Soften and help mom's heart to change. Please, Lord. From then on, every time Mom would start in on me, I'd exit the situation praying. I'd surrender my ego to God and ask the Holy Spirit to move. And over time, Mom started reading her Bible and praying. Amazing. Amazing grace. What a difference it made in our lives when she was saved. Daniel, here, I made your lunch. You didn't have to do that. I'm happy to. Thanks, Mom. I love you. Don't worry about anything. God is in control. I love you, Mom. And yes, he is. I am so thankful for the peace that's in our family now. Although I had become a Christian and my mother became loving and supportive, I still found myself struggling mentally. God doesn't just remove all struggles when we become a child of his. At 28, I was diagnosed with clinical depression and it was eating away my life. My pastor was someone I turned to for support. How are you doing, Daniel? It's hard. Sometimes I can't eat, sleep, shower, or get out of bed to function. That's no good. It's like a, like a dark cloud over my mind and life, leaving me feeling empty and hopeless. And you've seen a doctor? Yeah. While I was there, I realized how many others have felt this way. And all my life, I never knew about it. Mm. Depression can affect anyone at any stage of life. It feels like since I know the Lord, I shouldn't feel this way. I feel guilty for not being happy and optimistic and hopeful. Christians are supposed to be hopeful. There are hills and valleys in all our lives. There are mountaintop experiences that are marvelous. But some valleys are treacherous. They sure are. What we need to remember is God is right there with us through all of it and calls us to press on, leaning and depending on him. What if I can't? What if I don't know how? Do things for his kingdom. Focus on that, 
and see if it helps. I knew nothing about mental illness until experiencing it for myself. And I decided there was a good place to start, right there in the thick of it. I began sharing my testimony and many who were depressed and suicidal began to relate. As I shared and ministered, my own symptoms of depression alleviated. Pastor Rick had been right. God's word says that if we repent of our sins, confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that he died and rose again, we will have eternal life. But it's not just life after death. It can also be abundant life in the present. Our sins are erased, not only past, present, and future, but our burdens and fears can also be lifted. Our minds and hearts and souls are transformed and united with God, and we know his spirit lives in us. If you seek, pray, and believe, you will know Jesus is king. He lives. Listening friend, Daniel's life was restored by trusting in Jesus, who can make all things new. Jesus tells us in Matthew 11, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Have you made that choice, friend? And if you haven't, you'll never find the peace and contentment that only God can give you until you do. Why not trust Christ today? Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 promise that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you need help in making this crucial decision, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM. Pacific Garden Mission desires to meet the physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional needs of each individual. If you are homeless and need help getting back on your feet, you're welcome to come to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607, or call 312-492-9410. For Unshackled-related items, our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. Did you know we've created even more quality Christian content for you, our listener? It's true. You can check out our daily devotionals. In these four-minute episodes, we hear a true story of transformation with supporting Scripture, and an application point to help us dive deeper in our biblical understanding. If you'd like to hear this program in your area, we encourage you to reach out to your station manager and ask them to bring you Unshackled's Daily Devotionals. This is program number 3,848. Heard in the true story of Daniel Martin were Patrick Thompson, Isabel Quintero, Marcy Mencati, Jim Craig, and Brian Plaharchik. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Reagan Smith and Sharon Park. Audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Kylie Hammond. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today or reach out to us on social media. Connecting with you means a great deal to us. You can find us on Facebook, X, Instagram, and YouTube at Unshackled PGM. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory reminding you that the doors to Pacific Garden Mission are open night and day. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you. Mm -hmm.